After the Headland by Evie Wilde. We are a week from the end of the job in Boondary. I'm in the shower at the side of the tractor shed, watching a thumb-sized redback that's always sat at the top of the shower head. She hasn't moved at all, except to raise a leg when I turn on the tap, like the water's too cold for her. The day has been a long and hot one. The tip of March. And under the crust of the Galavi roof, the air in the shearing shed has been thick like soup. Flies bloating about in it. I'm low on shampoo, but I use a good slug of it. And feel the suds run down my dips and crevices. The water cooling off my lower back, where the scars get hot and throb with a sweat. Above me is a fast, blackening sky. The night comes quickly here. Not like in the city where you could spend all night at work and not notice its difference from the day other than the slowing off of customers. The first stars are bright needles. And in the old Morton Bay fig that hangs over the tractor shed and drops nuts on the roof while I sleep, a carawan and a white galah are having it out. I can hear the blood, thick bleat of them. The flying fox goes overhead and just like that the smell of the place changes and night has settled in the air. Someone moves outside the pallet board screen at the shower and I steal my hands in my hair. Greg? A call but no answer. I turn the tap off to listen. The red bag sets down her leg. Greg, the suds are still thick in my hair and they keep up a crackle in my ear holes. I think of being found alone and taken away back there, tied up and left to rot in the long grasses. There is a smell of fat and eggs frying. Someone steps quietly around the shower. It could be any of the team. It could be Alan who's getting deaf these days looking for electrical tape or kerosene or batteries or rags. But it is not. That much is clear from the change in the air. Greg? I'm less than 150 kilometres from Otto's. The closest I've been since I left Gaymont. But still, in seven months, I've travelled up and down the country and, and even if he has a nose like a bloodhound, I've covered my tracks. I've covered my tracks. I mouth the words. The palette to my right darkens. And through a punched out knot in the grain of the wood, an eye appears. And I back away from it, my voice gone. I know about you, says the eye. You don't fool me. I know about you and what you've done. The voice is thick and sticky. And there's that smell of rotten eggs and lanolin together and whiskey in unwashed places. I've covered my tracks. It's been seven months and I've covered my tracks, but my heart is beating fast. I have to put my hand to the wall to steady myself. The spider reacts, turns in a small circle, settles again. The eye twitches, and I think of driving my thumbnail right into it, but I can't bring myself to touch it, and there's nothing else sharp to poke it with. The eye slides up and down. The iris is a milky blue. I know what you're about, says the eye. It disappears and the shadow moves away. My heart drums. I look through the knot in the wood and see Claire staggering off in the direction of the shearing shed. He's been away the week. He's found something out. I bolt from the shower without washing off the suds, round the side of the shed to my sleeping quarters. I pull on pants, shorts and a singlet and then I begin stuffing everything else into my backpack. If you were so sure he'd never find you, says my head, 
Why are you so prepared to leave? Why do all your belongings fit in a backpack? Everything is in there except my shears, which I left on the bench next to the wall table to sharpen in the morning. And the carapace of a cicada that Greg gave me last month when he asked if I'd go to the Gold Coast with him once the job was done. I hold it in my palm and it vibrates with my pulse. Just spend a month in the water. Fishing, swimming, drinking beer, he said. Get the dust off us before the next job. I put the skin back down and go to find Greg in the dinner hall. Almost everyone has gathered there for tea, and I scan the bench for Claire, but he's not there. I sit down next to Greg, who's talking to Connor about boat engines, and I try to make it clear that I want to talk to him by putting my hand on his shoulder. He squeezes my thigh under the table, but doesn't turn round, too involved in his conversation. Corroded so far, it broke through and dropped down into the bilge, he says. Connor is drinking from a can and says, Yep, yeah, it's just the way she'll go, people forget. His voice becomes high-pitched and incredulous. As far as an engine is concerned, what is your enemy? Yep, yeah, says Greg. And I shift about next to him. But I don't want anyone else to know there's a problem. <coughs> You're right, asks Greg, distracted by my fidgeting. I need to talk to you. I say quietly. <coughs> Greg looks at me a moment, takes a swig of his drink and snakes his arm around my back. Can we go somewhere? Tea's coming out. Yes, but whisper it. I lean closer to him. People assume we're having some sort of moment, I suppose, but no one could be less interested. A grey steak arrives in front of me and trays of boiled potatoes get passed down the line. My mouth goes dry. Have you seen Claire yet? This truck's back, will be round somewhere. Why? What's the owe you? Nothing. I just... Look, can we go to the Gold Coast? He gives me a hopeless look. Like, he doesn't know what on earth's the matter with the woman. Yeah, I suggested it. What, are you having a stroke or something? He puts six large potatoes on his plate and passes the tray, which I pass to Stuart on the other side of me. I mean, now! Can we just hop in the truck and go now? Why? What's happened? Nothing's happened. I just want to go now. Greg looks confused. Well, so do I, but we've got to finish the job. Why? Greg is chewing on a lump of steak. Why? Because they're my mates. I'm not leaving them a man down. Besides, we go early, we don't get the bonus. It's just a week we've got left. Not long. He swallows. Can you just trust me that we need to leave now? He puts his fork down. Why do we need to leave now. What's the difference? <laughs> you rob a bank? I open my mouth to speak. But there is nothing I can tell him.